Welcome back to Slow Living. In this video, I will show you how you can sew a quarter zip pullover from scratch. I found some of these styles online to use as inspiration and I really liked how you can sort of dress it up for more of a street style look or you can dress it right back down for when you're lounging around at home. I actually intended to make this jumper for my friend for her birthday and then I also made a matching little jumper for her daughter who was turning one. So I was really pleased with how they turned out and I'm definitely going to have to make one for myself because I've experienced how comfortable and how easy they are to sew up. So I sketched out my final design, which included the quarter zip, a slightly dropped shoulder for a bit of an oversized feel, and then that collar stand around the neck. I'll show you how to create all these pattern pieces from scratch, just using an existing garment that you have at home so that your jumper will fit you. There will be a front piece, a back piece, a pair of sleeves, two collar pieces, a front facing piece and a back facing piece, which I accidentally cut out of the shot, but they're the two pieces that will help us create this really neat finish around the zip. You might wanna take a screenshot here so that for future reference, you can know all the pattern pieces that you're going to need. To draft the pattern pieces that we need, you'll have to find a jumper that you already have that fits the way that this new jumper will fit. So for this style, I would recommend slightly oversized. You don't want it to be um, hugging your figure or too tight. Um, the fabric doesn't really allow for that. So you want it to be like an oversized sort of sweatshirt style. Once you have that, we can start to trace off some of the main pieces. I like to start with the back piece. So trace all the way along the neckline, across the shoulder, around the armholes, and then down the side seams all the way to the hem. The front pattern piece will actually be the same as the back except for the neck. So just trace that off as well. Take note of how long your sweatshirt is. Um, so you can add some extra length to the hem if you would like to. I made mine about an inch longer and I added about one centimeter to the side just to give that a little bit more space. To make the shoulder a little bit more dropped, I extended my shoulder seam out about an inch and then I joined that curve all the way back down to the underarm seam. Now use the same process to trace off your sleeve pieces. I forgot to mention that it's a lot easier to do these pieces on the fold because the left and right side should be exactly the same. And for this sleeve style, the front and back of the sleeve will be the same as well. You also might find it easier to lift up the sleeve and then follow the seam underneath to trace off and get an accurate sleeve shape. Now, because we added a little bit of extra fabric to the shoulder to make that dropped shoulder feature, it means we have to take off a little bit of fabric from the head of the sleeve. So measure how much fabric you added to your front and back pieces at the shoulder. For me, it was just over an inch. So I'm going to take off just over an inch from the top part of my sleeve and then carefully sketch a curve that meets back with the original sleeve. Now to draft the collar pieces, we need the measurements of the front and back neck. So just use a measuring tape to go along the curve of both the front and back and note down these measurements. Also remember that because my patterns are on the fold, it's actually double these measurements to get the full measurement which we'll use to draft the collar. And then your collar piece will be a rectangle with the width of approximately three inches, however high you would like your collar to come up on your neck. And then the length will be the measurement of your full back neck and your full front neck. The last pieces to draft are the front and back neck facing pieces. So for that, um, take out the zip that you're going to be using. The one that I used was 20 centimeters in length and then mark on your front piece how far down the zip is going to come down on your neck, keeping in mind that about three inches of it is going to be on your collar piece as well. Once you've done that, you can draw a line approximately an inch lower than that, and then join that up all the way to the top of the shoulder seam. Make it at least five centimeters in width, and that'll make it easier to sew later on. And now the last piece to do, which I sort of forgot to show you before, is the back facing piece. So use the same point where you've marked your front facing piece on the shoulder seam, but then instead of marking it all the way down because the back doesn't have a zipper, we're just gonna do a nice little curve. 
Now before we cut any of our pieces out, make sure to add one centimeter of seam allowance around every single one of your pieces. The front and back facing pieces are also cut on the fold, so make sure that when you trace off your pieces, you fold them and cut them out together so that the left and right sides are identical. Now that you have all of your pattern pieces, you can make a fabric estimation. It will depend on how big your pattern pieces are, how wide the fabric is, and that will determine how much fabric you need to buy. I chose to use this 100% cotton terry, which is a very classic sweatshirt material. It's a really nice weight for a jumper, so I would recommend the same. Otherwise, you could also use a fleece, and that way you'll get that nice um, brushed fuzzy cotton on the inside. It does have a little bit of stretch to it, but not a huge amount. So just make sure that the stretch of the fabric is going in the correct direction. You want the stretch of the fabric to be going around the body when you cut out all your pieces. I like to cut my fabric on the fold, so that means that I align the two edges of my fabric so that I'm essentially cutting some of my pieces in pairs. Um, but be very careful if you're not that experienced and you're trying to do this. Um, just take care that you need one of each of the pieces that I've shown you on that screenshot that we took earlier. And now we can start sewing. So we're going to begin with the shoulder seams of both the front and back pieces, right sides together, and then the front and back facing pieces, again, right sides together. Because of the fabric I'm using and because of the style that I've chosen, I can get away with using a straight stitch, even though this is technically a stretchy fabric, but do take care if you've chosen a different type of fabric, you might need to use a zigzag stitch or an overlocker and not just a straight stitch. Even though these edges shouldn't fray, I want to give them a professional finish, so I'm going to overlock the edge. That will just keep your edges nice and neat and together. And then I'm actually going to fold them to one side and top stitch them down, and that's gonna give a little bit of detail and also strengthen the seams so they're not so easily pulled apart. Now we need to mark where the center point is of the front facing and also the front piece so that we know where the zip is going to go. And you can use chalk or an erasable marker to actually draw a straight line down the center front so that you can use that as a guide later on. To attach the collar, line up the short sides of your collar pieces with the marking that you just made on the center front. It should fit perfectly all the way around because we measured our neck measurements before and we lined up our collar pieces to be exactly the same. Now do the same to attach the other collar piece to the front and back facing. I also overlocked and top stitched it down to make things nice and neat. Now attaching the zipper is by far the hardest part of this entire project. So I decided to do a little sample zipper to show you the importance of some of the instructions that I'm trying to communicate. So let's pretend that this marking is down the center front where we want to attach our zipper. And the most important part is this little fork down the bottom. The two ends of this tiny little fork need to end where the end of the zipper is. So as you can see here, both of those forks end at the very end of the zipper. Cutting in a straight line and not having that little fork will mean that there is no fabric for you to finish your zipper off and there'll be a raw edge. That is definitely not what you want. So unlike the other example where I'm sewing up a sample zipper just to show you, we are not going to cut into the fabric. Instead, I'm going to show you the importance of that little fork just by doing an example first, but do not cut your center front yet. So as an example, we're sewing down about six mil down one side of the zipper and we want our stitching to end just where the end of the zipper ends, where that metal bit ends. We can do the same for the other side of the zipper. And then because we've actually cut our fabric in this instance, we can push the zipper through and then turn it over so that we can see that that little fork has now given us a little triangle of fabric to be able to finish off our zipper. This side of the zip shows quite clearly that that's the little edge we need to finish off and having this little triangle of fabric is really important so that we can sew straight across there. There's no raw edge and everything is finished really neatly and really nicely in a box shape like this. When we turn this over, you can see that I still find this a tiny bit messy. You can see that corner where it looks like I've cut too far in. And I'm not really happy with that finish because I don't want my jumper to look like that. So when it comes to sewing the jumper, 
we're going to cut down the center front, but we're not going to cut into the little forks yet. So cut all the way straight down, except for the two little fork ends. We're going to cut into them after we've sewn straight down the two sides. Use chalk or an erasable marker to draw in the little forks before you cut anything. It's always better to cut a little bit less and double and triple check that your zipper is longer than the line that you've cut. And when you're happy with it, we can sew down one side of the zipper first. Because our jumper has a lining, so unlike the example that I did before, we're actually going to sandwich the zipper in between the jumper and the front facing. So it should be jumper with the zipper face down and then with the facing on top, right sides together. You can always pin it together and then flip it out the right way to make sure that you've got everything in the correct order before you sew it down. It's a good idea to use a skinny foot so that you can get quite close to the zipper without the fear of sewing into the zipper itself. My seam allowance is approximately six mil from the edge. So simply sew in a straight line all the way down, remembering to stop your stitching precisely where the end of your zipper is, just like the example. Now we use the same process to do the other side of the zipper, making sure that you sandwich it in between the front and the facing. Again, pin it in place so that you can check that everything is sitting correctly. But the one thing that you will find at this point is that it's very difficult to sew into the bottom of the zipper. And that's because we haven't cut into the little forks yet. So this is the point where it's a good idea to very, very carefully cut into the two little forks at the end of your zipper. And that will allow you to sew all the way into those points to be able to get that really nice, neat finished box shape. Now, if you're anything like me, it was still a little bit difficult to get the perfect finish on this zipper. So what I ended up with was this little corner where you can see it's not quite turned out properly. To fix that, I used a pin to mark the point which I needed to sew up to or to trim into. Sometimes when that corner doesn't turn out properly, it means we haven't actually cut deep enough into that corner. So cutting into it slightly will allow us to push the fabric through and to fix it up and make it a lot neater. Now that we've cut into those two little forks, when we open up to the inside of our jumper, we should see those two little triangles on either side of our zipper. We've got two triangles, unlike the example, because we have the outer of the jumper and we also have the lining. So on one side of the zipper, there's a triangle from the lining. And when we flip that over, there's another triangle from the actual jumper itself. We need both of these triangles to line up at the bottom of the zipper and then we can sew straight across to finish it off beautifully. It was hard to show on the actual jumper, but this is what it looked like on the example. Now the outside of the jumper should look like this, all nice and finished. But before we can do the top stitching around it to really secure everything in place, we need to finish off the collar. With the zipper undone, you can then fold over both sides of your collar, doing the left side first and then the right side, sewing one centimeter along the top edge of the collar to secure everything in place. Once you turn it the right way out, it should look like this and it's ready for a quick press with the iron so that everything sits nice and flat. Now we can top stitch all around the outside. I found it easiest to begin our back tack at the bottom of the zipper then going all the way up towards the collar, around the collar, and then finishing off again underneath the zipper. Now I'm going to overlock all around the edge of the facing that's on the inside of the jumper. This is so that the raw edge doesn't come all undone and little bits of fluff don't end up getting everywhere. You can just use a zigzag if you don't have a serger or an overlocker. And then we just pin that down in place because we're going to top stitch it down so that it doesn't flap around inside the jumper make sure that all the little bits are sitting in place, pin them down, double check that it's sitting nicely on the outside, and then you can sew them down. If you're a more experienced sewer, you might wanna sew this top stitching with the right side outwards, but I find it a lot easier just to follow the edge of the facing, and that's on the inside of the garment. So it didn't really bother me that much. I don't think the stitches turn out that much different when you sew it this way. Now we can attach our sleeves. 
So using the middle point of the sleeve to line up with the shoulder seam of your garment, pinning that in place, pinning your underarm seams in place, and then sewing it all. I sewed these, I overlocked them, and then I top stitched them to get the final result like this. And then the last thing to do is to close up the side seams. Just put the right sides together. Again, sew one centimeter and overlock. I didn't top stitch these in place though. The last thing to finish off are the hems. So you can overlock the sleeve hems and also the hem of the body and then iron them in place, making sure that you take note of the amount of seam allowance that you left so that your hems are the correct length for you. Then depending on the amount of stretch in the fabric that you chose, you can either straight stitch your hems or zigzag them. I would suggest zigzagging for more stretchy fabrics and using a straight stitch for those that are less stretchy. Then the last thing to do is give everything a final press. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. This was super satisfying to sew and it also fitted my friend perfectly and she loved her gift. So like I said, I'm definitely going to sew one of these for myself. I hope that this was helpful for you. And if you did have a go, I would love to see how your jumper turned out. You can also find more sewing tutorials over on my channel. I did a similar jumper actually, that's a Patagonia one. I also do other sewing tutorials and mending tutorials about how to care for your garments. So do check that out if you are interested. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye!